Good day, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, from wherever you may be pressing play today. I am Erica AEC. I am a part of the Communications Board for the Pan-African Heritage Museum. And today I have with me Mr. Barbakar Mbo, who is the interim convener of the Curatal Board for the Pan-African Heritage Museum. And today we're talking about the museum, but ahead of the museum's physical launch, which is due in 2023, they're launching on May 5th, a very unique experience, a virtual experience, opening up the website to a virtual museum. And today our guest, Bavakar, is going to talk to us about kind of the museum that's coming together. But before we can walk in virtually, we have an opportunity to talk about it, to see what happens when we hit play ahead of the museum walking in virtually, and then again, ahead of the museum opening up in this physical space. So thank you so much. Good day, Barbakar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And where are you today? I'm in Boston. And where are you? I am in sunny Florida in Miami. Wow, that's awesome. And the museum is going to be in Ghana, West Africa, and it's going to pull in all of different parts of the African diaspora and people of African descent to kind of have a, a, a history lesson, um, a long form history lesson and that, that brings us back to the continent and brings us back to humanity. Now, the physical museum is going to be opened in 2023 that will feature artifacts and other historical context to give us um, a piece of history as to what happened in Africa before the colonizers came in and really decimated the continent. So tell me about this virtual museum and how that's going to capture some of the history without actually walking into the physical museum. What's going to happen on May 5th? Thank you for uh, having me for this uh, historic occasion to present the uh, Pan-African Heritage uh, Museum of Ghana located not far from uh, Accra. Um, but this museum is also in the uh, movement of several other mu uh, museums that are being uh, built uh, from North and South to West Africa. At a particular time when the uh, return of uh, Africa's patrimony uh, located uh, in the Western world is uh, debated, legislated, at, and at times litigated. So these museums then uh, aim at adding to, if not replacing, those museums we have inherited from the colonial era demonstrating thereby Africa's engagement with and commitment to its history and culture. So as you said, we will be inaugurating the museum in 2023, next year. Um, but prior to that, there are new dynamics in uh, African museum history, patrimonies, that we thought that uh, perhaps needed to be looked into, but from the contemporary uh, era, particularly in terms of technology. So therefore, to my knowledge, this is the first attempt on the continent to build a digital museum while the physical museum is being, is under construction. And the reason is that we, think that it is time for Africa to project itself uh, out of the continent to reach out perhaps to those who may be interested or who are curious about African history, art, culture, but who perhaps cannot uh, take the long trip to Africa. So therefore, the museum, the digital museum, is an extension of the physical museum open to the world, 
for everybody to enjoy. Just ask, you will go to any other museum uh, and uh, enjoy uh, the collections, the exhibitions, the, uh, the programs, the talk, etc. You know, so that is, uh, in a nutshell, the digital museum is an extension of the physical museum to the world. So the Digital Museum will launch officially on May 5th. Why May 5th and what is going to happen when you go to the website that day? Right. You know, May 5th is the World uh, Patrimony Day, uh, where uh, people around the world celebrate uh, culture, celebrate patrimony heritage. So it is fitting them that we time it uh, with this uh, worldwide uh, celebration to uh, uh, open uh, partially uh, the digital museum, which is going to be an ongoing work, uh, updating it, uh, changing the exhibitions. So when uh, on the 5th we uh, present the uh, museum, what first they're going to see is the chronology of the ways in which we are thinking the decolonial museum, which is fundamental to our uh, politics of representation, that it is no longer the ways in which object we are shown, it is not any, any longer the ways in which uh, museum would discuss. And the chronology, as I was saying, will take back people to the beginning. That is, the first exhibition will be Africa, the cradle of human origin. Mm -hmm. Now, this is very important because we may argue that all human beings are Africans, even though that is perhaps a little bit too general. But the point we want to make is that from Africa, humans have traveled to populate the other parts of the world. And in the process of that first migration of the human, uh, phonetics have changed, colors have changed. Uh, and today we have this uh, rich and diverse uh, human population. So we will start with Africa, the cradle of humanity. We will tell the story of the species from the Homo erecticus all the way to the grandmother of all human, Dinkanesh, that Western uh, paleontology have called Lucy. But uh, in Africa, we call her Dinkanesh, uh, the mother of whole, all human. Uh, we are going to do so in a rigorous academic uh, 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 standard, but at the same time, we are going to narrate it in an African framework we call telling story. So we will be telling the story of these first human. How did we uh, hear them within the African storytelling? How do we now try to link African oral history and storytelling to this scientific basis? Because one of the things that uh, you come across in the first step of research in that field is to see how storytelling is backed by paleontology. For example, uh, in Tanzania, there is, which is also another foyer of human origin, there is a story of, there is a species that has disappeared three million years ago, according to the paleontologist, and it was a horse with three toes. Well, if you look at the storytelling in West Africa, they are, they are calling uh, Mamkumba, the horse of the ancestor. Mm -hmm. Now, this 
species of uh, animal disappeared maybe two million years ago. But it is still today considered as the host of the spirit. So within that, when you're when you're capturing the 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 essence of the past and people are tuning in today, tell me about some of the voiceovers that are gonna be used and the technology that's gonna be used to weave through these narratives in the digital on your computer in the digital space. Right. So whereas you uh, you will go to a museum and you will spend five minutes standing uh, facing the wall text and then reading before entering the exhibition. We will take you through the exhibition with an introductory voiceover. In this, in this case, nothing has changed. It's just that we are moving from text mm -hmm. to uh, voiceover, uh, narrating scientifically the, uh, the exhibition, but in a style of storytelling. For example, we will tell you uh, how did they walk out of Africa? Where did they pass? What did they, how, how did they sign their passing through? Uh, which you can see today through the two parts, the two, two areas where our human ancestors have passed through to go out of Africa and to populate the remaining of the world, which is the Isthmus of Suez and the Strait of Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so, so this is a, it's a beautiful story mm -hmm. of which can bring us above our races, our race beyond our color with an understanding of this is happening 3.5 million years ago. And right. then we're telling the story today. Right. So that is that is little bit just kind of snippets of what uh, it is uh, going to present uh, on the fifth. So in looking at the early civilization and the parts of that component that will be a part of the digital museum, can you also talk to me about some of the other themes that will be a part of it? Right. So we will open with, uh, of course, the origin of humanity. But prior to the open, uh, opening of uh, the uh, Africa, the cradle of human origin, we will have different voices across Africa who will tell the story, their story, of the concept of the creation of the world, mm -hmm. right? And we call it Genesis, the idea of origin in African people. So people will say, according to their customs and their traditions, how did the world begin, mm -hmm. right? Then that will move you now to the existence of human in the cradle. Then from there now, Africans went on to create civilization. Mm -hmm. Egypt, uh, there is an exhibition on ancient Egypt, on Napata, on Nubia, on Kush, on Meroe, this heartland of uh, African people uh, 4,000 years ago, you know, and that huge technological advances uh, in those days, while perhaps the rest of the world had not reach those uh, steps. Then from those ancient civilizations, we will move now to the medieval African, what we could call medieval African, uh, the empire of Monomatapa, the great, we call the great Zimbabwe, the Congo empire, the Ghana empire, the Mandinko empire, the Ashanti empire. So all these will be sub exhibitions within the larger team of African civilization. It will take us, it will take us all the way to now, mm -hmm. going now to what we call the Mahafa, which is the uh, caravel and the caravan. These two means of uh, transportation uh, that millions and millions of African people were deported to Arabia and to the new world. So that crossing then will take us now into the other exhibition, resistance and resilience, you know, uh, African and African diaspora spirituality. So it's a whole, it will run, as I said, from 
3.6 million years ago from Lucy, the Homo afarensis, mm -hmm. to you and I today. Mm -hmm. So what is the museum's messaging that they're trying to uh, share with the people that click and want to be a part of this digital museum? What is the overall message that the museum wants visitors to understand? Two fundamentals. One, African people never cease to be related simply because they are separated by ocean or by a desert. Second, there are within Africa the fundamental elements on which we can see ourselves as human beings because human beings were born in Africa. So you 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 come into the exhibition, you, you visit the museum, the digital museum, and you get out of it with a sense of renewed uh, commitment to both the dialogues of civilization, if you are uh, of another culture, but also a sense of self, uh, of who you are as an African people, wherever you are located in the world, right? So this is why we call it uh, the Pan-African heritage. So this heritage is located both in Africa mm -hmm. and out of Africa. So we are bringing now the two parts, to put it, uh, Africa in Iraq. Many people do not know that the largest uh, uh, revolt in Asia was the Sanj revolt. Uh, people don't know that there is a state in India, the majority of the people are African, right? And we have these scholars that are working on these fields that are now uh, providing uh, these uh, texts on which we are building the, uh, the exhibition. Mm -hmm. A very important note is that the most definitive uh, work on the history of African people is the general history of Africa, which was published by the United Nations. It is 12 volume, which is each volume is about 680 words. They went through every single aspect of African life, all the way from our ancestor, Luz, uh, Denkenesh, all the way to uh, contemporary Af uh, African people. So you get out of this exhibition, have one, an understanding that all humans are related because they have one ancestor and that ancestor is Africa. Mm -hmm. There is no more scientific debate about it. Uh, up to 19, uh, the 70s, they were quarreling, argumenting. But today, uh, all scientists have agreed that the human race is originally from Africa. So, but it is not for Africans to beat their chest and then saying we are the first human. If nature, if the conditions of nature have existed in other places, as in the United States, for example, most likely human would be born in the United States. But it just happened that the climatic conditions right. were so particular to Africa to allow, therefore, the emerging emergence of the homo sapiens sapiens, which is the man and the woman who just look like you and I today. It's such rich, rich history, and it's a unique experience because it's something that you choose to participate in. Can you tell me parts of the digital museum that are extra special? Is there room for interaction? Is there any room for 3D or any other capacities to be technologically right, right, involved? Right. So the uh, the the digital museum is just like any museum. Uh, and the difference that the objects are uh, reformulated in 3D. So you are interacting with an object. You will be able to see it face. You will be able to see it on the side. You will be able to be seeing it, see it on the uh, on the back. Furthermore, depending of your interest in one uh, artifact, you can click on it, and then read the text related to that uh, artifact or if you want to hear uh, there, there will be also an audio or a video that will allow you now 
to interact with a scholar on that particular field. So it is a it is a very dynamic, uh, interactive process. You can go back, you can come in, you can zoom in, you can zoom back. Do you see? So 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 it's it's totally interactive. Okay. And is it user friendly on phones? Easy for older people, or is it easy on the laptop? Is it user friendly? Yes, all the applications of the uh, uh, that the actual uh, digital world will allow will be uh, embedded in that. In the, you can you can take it to your you can take it with your eye your uh, your phone, and uh, perhaps later on, if you have time, you can uh, enjoy it in a better in the quietness of your living room or your backyard, right? So it is it is really uh, for us. We believe that it is a tool that will enhance uh, understanding uh, of African culture, mm -hmm. understanding of African history, but also a better appreciation of uh, this uh, million years old civilization, which uh, continues to this day. There is no interruption from the Omo appearances. 3.6 million years ago, Africans are still living in that same place where mm. mankind appeared 3.6 million years ago. So there is no uh, 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 discontinuity. So the Africans who were also displaced in the diaspora, when you get to the exhibition of African spirituality, where you will see, for example, the commonalities between voodoo in uh, Benin, and voodoo in Haiti, Makumba in Senegal, and Makumba in uh, Rio de Janeiro, the uh, Yoruba spirituality with Salvador de Bahia, with Cuba, with Trinidad and Tobago, with Jamaica. So, so you can you have a sense that okay, these people have left Africa long ago, but Africa never left them. Mm. Right. You know? Right, that and it's is, coming together good. virtually. It's coming together in one space. Absolutely. Right. Everything in one place at a click. Tell me the name of the website, and is there a cost to click through this history? Uh, yes, uh, we will uh, expect uh, people uh, to uh, express uh, their uh, appreciation uh, through a token of a small fee. But uh, that is not really what is uh, the focus for the creation. You know, we want to share it with everybody, but in order to maintain it and keep growing it, right, a token of appreciation from the visitors will be welcome. So how does the pass work? You you enter and is it 24 hours or do you have a code for a week or how does it work and Just like the museum. As far as you pay your ticket to a museum, mm -hmm. you're there until the museum closes or until you leave. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's 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 no different from uh going to a museum, paying your here we're talking about uh, 25 to 30 dollars but we're not there uh, but paying your ticket entering and visiting now you can because of the vastness of the exhibition uh, you may spend all your day there you know uh, if you wish to uh, but uh, otherwise that means there's a lot of content on the, the digital museum if you could spend a, a whole day there that means there's a lot of content to explore in the digital oh, yeah, no, because uh, when you look at the uh, the exhibition for example we have about uh, 13 exhibitions wow a term we will have 13 exhibitions from Africa the cradle of human origin all the way to contemporary Pan-African visual expression, which is the exhibition of uh, Pan-African contemporary art, so that you will be able to see artists, contemporary artists from Brazil, uh, Afro-Brazilian, uh, contemporary artists from Haiti, from Jamaica, uh, from Mali, from Zimbabwe, from South Africa. So this vastness of the Black world uh, to capture it in a in a digital exhibition 
this is why it is so vast a term when it's finished. So, but uh, we are just scratching the surface for the moment. But we are excited that um, we are part of a new vision in Africa where now we've been thinking about putting a digital museum for the first time on the continent. It's very forward thinking and considering this is the center of humanity, it's like, of course, a digital museum launched in, in, in Africa is uh, only fitting, is only fitting. Were there any complications with trying to really focus on what themes you wanted to put in the museum, in the digital museum, because you can't use that, put everything. Was right. there any challenges in trying to piece together the message that the museum wants to get across? I think perhaps uh, in any human endeavor, there is a challenge. However, I think the founders of the Pan-African Heritage Museum uh, are visionary in the sense that they, really uh, match the name of the museum with the composition. For example, we have an academic board of 50 scholars from the continent, through the United States, through the Caribbean, through Brazil, all the way to India. So that had made our work very, very, uh, not easy, but less challenging, I would say. Uh, you name renowned scholars, you know, from Molefe Ashante, Carol Boyce Davis, you know, uh, you name them, uh, they are in. Uh, in Africa, you have the Shekanta Job uh, Universities, Lego, uh, Legon, Ghana, and Sukha in Nigeria. Uh, so the large historical uh, uh, universities uh, on, uh, on the continent have come on board. And this, this is the academic committee. They are in charge of looking at the veracity of the data, looking at the correctness of the... So, so therefore, it is a scientific work that they have produced and perhaps our job, that made our job much easier because uh, we just... We just implement the script and we have of course the uh, partnership of UNESCO uh, which uh, brought tremendous resources in terms of availability of uh, uh, database of images you know the great African-American photographers such as Chester Higgins uh, put his uh, database collection at our disposal without asking anything uh, in return. So it is It is really uh, the appropriation that the world, the Black world have made of the project that is very reconforting. Right, and it's coming together on the significant day of, of May 5th, right. the UNESCO World African Heritage Heritage. Day. So it's yes. a day to really all of us of African descent come yes. together. And that, is that yes. a part of the messaging as well? Yes, and then we have an exhibition, Woman and Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. uh, because oftentimes in Pan-Africanism, uh, they just talk about the founding fathers. So what we want to do uh, is also to bring a specific groups that have been invisibilized, and that is the role of women in Pan-Africanism. You know, all the conferences of Pan-Africanism uh, Pan-African conferences, women were there. They participate in it. So that, therefore, a young woman of 15 to 18 years old that will go to visit a uh, Pan-African woman, right? And then hear them speaking or watching the, uh, a video from them. Uh, that in itself is important because it's going to give them the psychological framework for success and striving for greatness, right? right? So there is this aspect of making people understand that your history did not start with slavery. Mm -hmm. Your history started 3.6 million years ago. Your history is world history. Right. right. And 
you, it's online. It's even curated for you personally coming up on May 5th. Guys, right. Through the Pan African Heritage Museum.org uh, website, where people can meet there as a world, as the African descent community, and see uh, the virtual museum live in action and see what it has to offer. How long will it be up for? Is it just that day or? No, uh, that day is just the launching, actually. Uh, and then the next day, uh, it is open. But as I said earlier, it is a process that by August the 30th, we will be completing the museum. But uh, May 6th, you can already visit Africa, the cradle of human origin. You can uh, uh, look at the videos of uh, different African civilizations, uh, concept of Genesis, how the world was created. And this is, for me, this is really what I was captivated, right? You will go to uh, people like Azan the Azande and how they talked about the creation. You go to people like the Yoruba and you look at the narrative of how the world was created, right? And then you are sitting there and you see the skies, the video, and you hear these voices, and you hear the thunder, and you hear now the voice telling you the story of how the world was created. And I and, and I think that is almost giving you goosebump about how these narratives of creation actually more and more are validated by the scientific facts that today archaeology and paleontology I, I, I bring it. Awesome. This is going to be great. I know I'm looking forward to it on May 5th. Can you share the website one last time? for One people? last time. Yeah. Right. On May 5th, we'll be there. On May 5th, be there be there we will be logging in and we'll be there thank you so much for your time thank you, forward. We're looking forward. thank you very much for having me